Hello, hello, hello. You're tuning into another episode of The Wonder Can Show. Today's second topic the NBA draft is on the move. And what I'm going to talk about is, of course, is the number one draft pick this year, Victor Wembenyama. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I did not see the Spurs taking him. I did not. And the reason why I did not is quite simple. And, I, and I'm seeing now other people are feeling the same way. He reminds me of Porzingis. <laughs> That's why. Um, there were already talks, you know. But before we even go into that, congratulations to the young man. At the end of the day, it's always good news to see somebody achieve what they've been working their entire life to get to. So salute to him. Um, he, one way or the other, he was going to be in the NBA. He was going to go top three. I thought he was going to go second. Um, <clears throat> but the Spurs took him. I truly thought the Spurs were going to be scared because of his feet and legs. There's already been so many things that have been taking place with him regarding his feet and legs. It's the same idea I had when the Zion Williamson stuff it came up and I was like, look, Zion is immensely talented. He's a bull in a china shop. When he gets ahead of steam, there's no one in the league that is strong enough to even slow him down. But his weight will be a considerable factor for him moving forward. I said he could be this generation's Shaq slash Charles Barkley. I truly believe that. Now with Wembenyanya, um, or Wemby, as everyone likes to call him, when I watch him play, He's like, uh, everyone says a stretch four. No, when he plays, he plays almost like a three, like a small forward with uh, strong shooting characteristics, okay? And what that means is he'll roll around the elbow, coming down, um, you know, off screen, weak side, um, pull. I don't see him with crazy post moves and stuff like that. Um, I see him like a taller KD almost. You know what I mean? But when I watch him, when I look at him, his body type, it's Porzingis. And Porzingis, remember when he first came in, you know, everyone called him the unicorn because some of the stuff that he was doing on the court was just spectacular at his size, being able to handle the rock, move as he moved. But eventually, you know what I mean? He got dinged up. And it totally altered his career. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to happen, and I hope it doesn't happen, but it does have to be taken into strong consideration because to me, the Spurs, here's my, my thought. Everybody wanted Victor Wemby, right? Okay. I thought what the Spurs were going to do is dangle that in front of everybody and get a crap load of draft capital, moving down and getting more. Now, I know a lot of people say you don't do that for that level of talent. Personally, watching him play, I'm not super sold on him at all, you know. Um, I mean, I'm just going to be real. You know, a lot of the guys coming into the league, I remember when Steph came in when I was younger and I was telling everybody, I was like, you know, he's going to be good. It just, he has to be in a certain system. If you could shoot the way it's shooting, the way the league is changing. I remember I got a lot of flack for that. And Steph became Steph. So, you know, I could be right. I could be wrong. But when I watch him, I see Victor. Uh, I see Perzingis. And if he, listen, here's the thing. If you're looking at Victor and you're saying, well, what's his ceiling? Well, what did you think the ceiling for Perzingis was before he got hurt? In this league, uh, what you've seen some of these guys do, I could see 26, 27 a game. Um... Added, I think that would be probably his ceiling. If he develops his three ball even further, maybe 30. Um, but once again, can his body withstand the play? We're talking 82 games. Even if it's not, listen, the NBA is a shell of itself regarding the physicality of the game. But make no mistake about it. They, they tighten those reins up when it comes to playoffs. 
they allow those players to play a lot more physical. They, and then after those 82 games of the regular season, it, all those stuff take tolls on people's body. Now, he's going to have the best nutritionist. He's going to have the best trainers that money can buy. Because here's the thing. The Spurs are coming from a dynasty. They drafted the David Robinson. They drafted the Tim Duncans. So, you know, I could see why, you know, they would want him. Also, to the European player um, is taking the league by storm. If you're looking at what those players and or what encompasses those players, there's no off the court issues with them. I can't remember the last um, overseas player that was a problem off the court. I think that when you're looking at a lot of these other guys, whether it be weight, whether it be guns, whether it be women, there's always something that hurts the brand on the on court or off the court problems with them. And when you look at a Giannis, you look at a Joker, you know what I mean? You you look at a um Gil uh what's his name? Um Shy Alexander from OKC. When you look at all those players. Um, Luca, there's no off the court problems, and I think that weighs into it too for like the you know what they try to build and what they try to do in um San Antonio. David Robinson was coming out of the armed forces, you know what I mean? That's why they called him the Admiral. Um, Tim Duncan, very stoic man, quiet, doesn't cause problems, same thing. You know what I mean? I think that's what they wanted. They want a big man, build from the inside out, um, and then see where the chips fall. And also because of the attitude and the ability to build uh, a culture that's already there, but just extending it to the new generation, I think is imperative for what Popovich wants to do with the Spurs. The Spurs wanted to do it with Kawhi, but they just could not do it with him because he's not that type of player. You know what I mean? He's very, uh, let's just say he likes to do things his own way and it rubbed Popovich and his um, his people there wrong a couple times. So, you know, happy for the young man. Great. I called it wrong. It happens. I can't be right about everything, but I truly did believe the Spurs are going to dangle that, that guy in front of everybody and get a crap load of picks moving forward and build just a well-rounded team. Now, what he becomes, we all have to see, right? What do you, listen, what's his ceiling? We're not talking about a LeBron who everyone was looking at like, man, this guy could be up there with the Magics, the Birds, the Jordans, which, I mean, what happened? He, he wasn't like a, a Shaq or a Cole or, or Iverson or any of that, you know what I mean? Like, where do you see him falling? Do you see him eventually being a top 25 player of all time? And with the way that they're talking, a lot of people, I guess, feel that way. I personally don't, but we're going to get to see. Hopefully, you know, he proves me wrong. He goes absolutely bananas in the league. Becomes an elite factor. I mean, look, 25 is very realistic for him, but that's not saying too much anymore in this league where the scoring is so out of hand. I believe, was it this year? Where it was, what, what was it? 30 people or something of that effect over 20 points a game. <laughs> what was it? 20 something people or something like that over 25 a game. So the, the league has, I mean, the scoring has been absolutely through the roof. So he'll probably do it. Everything pretty much, you know, goes to how he, how his body holds up and how he, his body develops. So not just does it need to stay healthy, it's how it develops. Can he put the needed muscle and size on to bang inside? You know what I mean? Because when you're a center, you're going to take some hits. People are going to come there for you. And yes, he gets a lot of blocks, but let's be real. You know what I mean? They're gonna put, people are going to put their shoulders into his chest, and he is not a big man. Not, and I'm not talking about height, I'm talking about width-wise, weight-wise. He's not a big man, but we'll see what happens. Congratulations to Victor and Spurs, um, and we'll see what goes forward. But the NBA draft is literally going on, and we're going to see where else it goes, all right? But once again, this is another episode of the Wonderkin Show. 
thank you all for watching. Y'all already know what it is. Everything is love, and we have fun over here, but it's rooted in facts and truth. Please do remember, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Um, if you would like to leave a comment, please be respectful when you do. I know we had disagreements and banter and stuff back and forth, but just be respectful. That's all I ask. And if you want to donate to this channel to help it grow, bottom of the screen is a QR code. That's for a cash app. That's how we do all donations. You can find a cash app in the description of every video that we do. And the name of it is Money Sign The Wonder Can Show. Also available is the Patreon. If you want extra access behind the scenes, access, sweepstakes, fantasy football, that's how you do it. Okay? And you can also find that in the description of every video that we do. All right? Okay. But once again, this is another episode of the Wonder Kid Show. The show is Nitro signing off. And as always, you guys know my slogan. Peace. And I am out of here. Yep. Yeah.